starting at the very basic building blocks. So we'll start off talking about what's called syntax and semantics. What are the actual code that people write in order to make a web page a web page? And are there any special meanings behind any of these words that can convey special information to those who may not be able to access the web the same way I do? So perhaps someone who uses special accessibility tools. After we cover the syntax and semantics, we're going to talk more about this accessibility idea that I just alluded to. This idea that if we're going to build a web page, what do we need to do to make sure the most people as possible can access the information? We're also going to be talking about getting started in technology and writing code. And when I mean talking about getting started, I mean really talking about getting started. Right down to you and I are going to walk through together on how we're going to create a file. One of the things I think that really trips people up when they're starting to learn computer science or any type of technology-based criteria or curriculum is that professors or instructors say, let's get started, here's your homework, go ahead and do it, and everyone just kind of stops because they're not sure where to get started. I really want to be there for you to show you how to get started and get off on the right foot. So let's talk about what we'll cover in this course. In week one, the focus is on questions. It's not on coding, it's on questions. So I want you to understand what happens when you type something into the URL? If you type in www.introwebdesign.com, how is this page magically appearing in front of your browser? I also want to talk to you about what types of tools you are going to need in order to code. So we're going to talk about editors and browsers and other different software tools, because I want you to know right from the start what you're going to need in order to succeed in this class. Finally, we're really going to talk about HTML5. What happened to HTML1? What happened to HTML2? What is this evolution of what's going on with web design and the languages we used? So in week one, again, almost no coding, really just giving you an idea of how the web works and why it's important for you to be able to interact with people and with code that's being, that's being used to create your sites. Week two, we're going to talk a little bit of theory and then, unfortunately for some people, a lot of code. So there's this idea of something called the document object model upon which all web pages are built. If I can get you to understand just a little bit about that, then later on if you decide to go off and use WordPress or some other software to make your own website, you're going to be able to really understand what's going on so much better. We're going to talk about things called contextual tags and headings and different things we can use to make our site have different meanings and different appearances. We're going to talk about links, images, lists, tables, and also multimedia in case you would like to add any video or audio to your site. Week three, we're really going to put it all together. At this point, you should know just enough about HTML5 for you'll be dangerous, where you can create something that works but doesn't work all the time. So in week three, we're going to put it together, and I'm going to talk to you about some of the things that are often overlooked, such as validating your code. How can we make sure that the code that you wrote doesn't just look good, it's syntactically correct. It's going to work everywhere. So again, when we validate your code, we'll talk about the syntax, but we'll also talk about accessibility, which is, hey, we validated your code to make sure the rules are there, but let's also validate and make sure that the meaning is there as well. Finally, we'll talk about what's called domain name registration and web hosting because it's a lot more fun to make websites if you can actually put it out there on the internet and let your friends and family see it as well. Finally, we'll work on a final project where you will put together a lot of the different things that you've been learning. You are going to create what we call a syntactically valid multi-page website. So your, page, your site will have at least two to three pages. After you've done your coding, you'll run it through to make sure it validates and it's very accessible. So your final project is actually going to be something that's a little bit ugly, I'm going to admit to right now, because we're not going to be talking about styling, we're not talking about different things. I really just want you to understand the HTML5 language, and that's all about content. So let's talk logistics. Let's talk about who this class is for. Who am I aiming for, for my like kind of star student? I'm really looking forward to teaching the complete beginner, all right? This class is not for those people who were building a computer down in their basement when they were 12 years old. Okay. You're very welcome to hang out with us, but we are really here to talk about how we, through persistence, can create a website. 
One of the things that I'm kind of anti about is the word passion. Now, I'm passionate about teaching you this material, but I don't really feel like you need to be passionate about technology or passionate about computing to really get a lot out of this class. Instead, it's about persistence. I'd like you to just hang in there and learn enough that you can go off and really help people build better technology. I think you'll find it very straightforward. It's just, again, I can't emphasize enough that this class is about the language HTML5. It's not about creating beautiful sites. It's about you really learning just the building blocks. Um, and it's always so much easier to build something ugly the first time than build something beautiful. So how will you succeed in this class? In a perfect world, you would be coding with two or three other people and you'd be talking and you'd never be coding alone. So I'm hoping that you'll create a community, probably through the message boards. I need you to work smart. One of the things that kills me is when people say, oh, I spent three or four hours working on this. I, I never want to hear that from a student. Instead, I feel that if you've ever run into a problem when you're coding, you should stop after 10, 15, 20 minutes max and go walk away. Go get help from someone, take a break, think about something else. It's all about working smart, not necessarily hard. Next, you really need to learn how to look things up on your own. There's no way I can teach you everything you need to know about HTML5, um, and you wouldn't want me to. It would be very boring. Instead, you need to feel the confidence to go out and use search engines to look up the topics that you're interested in. My job is to give you those keywords and key ideas so you know what it is you want to search for. Finally, you really need to practice, practice, practice. You will not succeed in this course unless you've written the code yourself and really tried to muster your way through some of the mistakes and typos that you're going to have. Welcome to the course, and I hope you have a lot of fun as you learn more about HTML5.